Okay, thanks. So let's get started. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks all for joining. Today, my session will be about Power BI Model Documenter, um, and in especially in, with regards to external tools. Probably you all know these three external tools that are related to Power BI and that they're already out there for a long time, which is Dex Studio, Tableau Editor, and ALM Toolkit. These three is what you what are actually tools that you can install on your computer. But with the with opening up the enhanced metadata format of Power BI, it becomes available to build your own external tools. And so did I. During today's session, I will tell you more about the external tool that I built and how I did that, and also the reason behind why I did it. Um, before we get started, I will briefly introduce myself. My name is Mark. I'm working as a data and AI consultant uh, at McCall in the Netherlands, which is a Microsoft partner. And I'm actively blogging on my own website, data-mark.com. Um, and actually, where Alex and I already talked about, I'm also having my own swag, which combines my two biggest hobbies, which is beer and Power BI. Um, so that brings Power Beer. Um, feel free to reach out to me on any of the channels that are on the screen right now uh, if you have any questions or want to uh, have a chat later on. Um, enough about me, so let's get started. What will I tell you today? First of all, I will tell you a little bit more about external tools in general. Uh, once we've done that, uh, we will look at uh, analysis services in memory and why in specific that matters to external tools. As third topic, we will deep dive in building external tools and how I build my external tool uh, with, of course, a demo of the uh, model documenter. And last but not least, I also want to hear something from you, and especially when it comes to what should be in my next version of the tool. So let's first have a very brief look at documentation in general. If we look at documentation and documenting our uh, work that we do with Power BI, this is probably the less interesting topic for all of us. At least if you ask me, uh, I'm not delivering documentation that often. So a while ago, I posted on Twitter, if you deliver or use a Power BI solution, which results in a shared data set, does it come with proper documentation? And not very surprisingly, um, most people said, no, what's documentation? Luckily, there were still, still still some people that do care about documentation or said, yes, I do it if I have time left. Another MVP also replied to it, um, actually stating, I only do it when my customer cares about it, simply because not many customers care about documentation in today's work. Uh, simply because we work agile, we want to continue building new functionality and don't look back that often. If I look at my own experience, on the other hand, and once uh, I get a project handed over from one of my colleagues, of course, I don't want a big pile of paper like I show on the screen right now, but I do definitely want to have at least some documentation and at least some information on how is this data model built, why is it built in this way, uh, and what decisions are made to make it this way. And why, for example, do you build an, a bidirectional relationship, which is not best practice? So why did you do it? There can be a very specific reason for it. In the end, having some documentation and describing why you did something is the way to success, if you ask me. Simply because if you don't write down where this uh, model or this specific decision is made for and where it's intended for, the model or the, the report might be misused for different purposes, with a result that it, the data displayed on screen is not true or something is not going right. You already heard me saying a few times that I document the mole, and that's also what my tool is doing. But what about the rest? In fact, I'm not documenting anything about my visuals, bookmarks, or page navigation, or let's say the report in general. It has a reason, and that brings you also, also to uh, the analysis service in memory that I'll tell you a little bit more about in a second. If we look at a brief spoiler of what the external tool will look like, it is actually another Power BI report that generates a report about your data model. It generates some insights on the metadata of your Power BI data model with things like, for example, your table structure, your uh, uh, columns that are in, this in these tables, the Power Query code behind it, DEX expressions, measures, and also the relationships as well as row level security. 
I will demo this at the very end of this session. Um, but first, a little bit more about external tools in general. If we look at external tools, this is something that's been available for, let's say, three to four months now, uh, at least in general availability. Once the new metadata format became available, it was first in, in preview. But as of September 2020, the new metadata format uh, has reached general availability, which makes it possible for third parties to connect to the metadata of Power BI. This new metadata is actually what we call tabular object model. And tabular object model is a JSON structure that defines our entire data model, including tables, columns, relationships, and everything that is linked to our data model. External tools are already there, out there for a while because even before the enhanced metadata, you could already connect Deck Studio or Tableau Editor to your Power BI uh, instance, Power BI Desktop, but you need to be aware of then, back then it was not supported. But as of the new metadata, it is supported to connect these tools and uh, make it work and actually do read and write operations to your Power BI uh, file and actually use other tools than only Power BI Desktop to build your model. Having that said, the three tools I just showed you, those three have a, do have an installer and just next, next, finish, and you have it running on your computer. But all the other external tools, uh, and I will show a few more of them in a second, those require an other type of installation. Actually, you need to manually drop a file in your program files of your computer. And that can be a huge pain, simply because it requires admin permission. Of course, you also need that if you install it with an easy installer, but you also need to download them one by one. So luckily, the guys from Power BI Tips, in specific Mike Carlo, he built an external or, or an application which is called Business Ops which will allow you to install all these external tools that you might be interested in, interested in by just clicking them in his tool and it will be automatically uh, installed on the right location on your computer. So what else is out there? Well, there are a lot of external tools out there already. For example, Eric Swenson, he built an external tool to connect Excel to your Power BI uh, data model to do analyzing Excel even before you publish the, the model to the service. He even built an, an external tool to connect Tableau to your Power BI model. Personally, I wouldn't use that, but of course, if you like it, you can do it. Another one that I really like is the one that David Zhang built to, uh, which he calls the Dex Beautifier, uh, which uses the uh, Dex Formatter API and formats all your Dex expressions in your model by just click uh, a click of, the of a button. Just a few examples of what you can do with external tools and how you can enrich and improve your developer, developer experience in Power BI by leveraging all these external tools. So let's now have a look on analysis service in memory. Analysis services in memory is something that is very in specific related to Power BI, but how does these two relate together? Well, in fact, if you spin up Power BI Desktop on your computer and you open your task manager, what you will see is that actually SQL Server Analysis Services is running on the back end. In other words, every Power BI model runs analysis services on the back end, which makes it more interestingly that we are allowed to connect to this analysis service instance without having Power BI in between. And that's exactly what external tools are doing. It is directly connecting to the local host where your analysis services is running on your computer. This will also um, uh, let you easier to understand how these things relate together and how uh, external tools can uh, work with analysis services in memory to do read and write operations. This is all since the new metadata format. The new metadata format makes the metadata for Power BI exactly identical to the one of analysis services. Although there are a few minor differences that you might run into, but in general, it is uh, the same. And this is the shared tabular object model uh, structure, as you can see on the right hand side on the screen. This, this tabular object model is what you uh, might know from analysis services as the model.bin file. And this includes, for example, your table, your columns, partitions, measures, everything that we also know from a Power BI data model. It is an open format, so it is a JSON format and easy to read if you just open it in a text editor. 
Having that said, let's have a look at how you can build your own external tool. Building your own external tool actually requires three things to be done. And these three things are necessary in order to make it work, having an application itself, um, creating an icon, which will represent your application integrated in Power BI Desktop, as well as the file that makes the integration possible to connect your tool to Power BI. First of all, the application itself. And in this section of my presentation, I want to tell you what considerations I made and how I built my own external tool. Actually, I wanted to build an external tool, and as I'm not a developer, an application developer, for me it was a pretty big challenge. Okay, where do I get started? But luckily, the day before I started building, another MVP, Eric Swenson, he started building his own external tool as well, and he was happy to, to send me uh, his code and what he did. And in fact, he just runs some PowerShell code on the back. And I was like, hmm, that looks doable. I think I can do that as well. And that's exactly what I did. Although PowerShell is not meant for building applications, you can at least use it to uh, uh, execute some actions in a specific order uh, with, with some if then else statements and get things moving and getting, get things done. That's exactly what I did. It started all with about 50 lines of, of, uh, of uh, expressions in or of code in PowerShell. I have to admit, now today, my latest version of the model documenter is almost 200 lines long because I built in a lot of trial and error and uh, 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 error handling in the tool itself. So this is why I built it in uh, PowerShell because simply I'm not a developer and another advantage is it runs on every Windows computer, which is the same as uh, um, Power BI Desktop, of, of course. Power BI Desktop only runs on a Windows computer, and with that, it, uh, the match was easily made. Secondly, an external tool is integrated in Power BI Desktop. And in Power BI Desktop, you want it to be represented in the top ribbon of Power BI. In order to, to have it in there, uh, there are a few things that you need to do, which is the connection uh, file that you need to make, which I will tell you next. But if you want to have it in there, you also want it to be represented by with a nice icon, of course. And if we quickly open Power BI Desktop here, and I, this is what I call my crap file, and this is for a reason, tell you more about that in a second. In the top ribbon here, we have the external tools section. Um, and in this external tools section, we'll see a bunch of external tools that are already have installed. Each of, these, I, each of these files uh, or uh, tools represent one of the connections which have an, uh, uh, all have an icon and a name. And that is especially, especially what is represented in uh, the uh, external tool integration file, which is the pbitool.json file. This file makes the connection between your tool and Power BI Desktop. And this file, I will show you one in a second, um, it's also a JSON structure that connects everything together and includes your icon image uh, all in one. So let me open this one here. And this needs to be placed in a very specific location on your computer. If you look at a ribbon here, you go to your program files, common files, Microsoft Shared, and in there you will find Power BI Desktop and external tools. Each of the external tools that I've in, uh, installed on my computer is represented here by one of these icons. And if I just open a, a random one, for example, the one from Tableau Editor, um, and open that in a text editor, what you will see happening is that this is the, the file that is generated uh, to install it on your computer. This specific structure is what defines the external tool. First of all, just a, a version number, then the name, this is the name that is represented in the top ribbon. The description, this is just for your uh, for yourself to give the description, it's not represented anywhere. Um, then the path of the application that you want to start. So in here you will see exactly the location where Tableau Editor is installed. And you have server and, and database as arguments. And this is the location where your analysis services is locally hosted on your computer right now. These two arguments will be filled by Power BI as variables once you click the button in the top ribbon. 
And last but not least, here we have the icon data, where which is representing the base64 image uh, of our icon that we have in the top ribbon. This is one that you that you see uh, um, is Tableau Editor, which is slightly different than one of the custom built external tools. Because if you look in here, you will see that the program files is just running an application. As a comparison, let me open the one that I have built. And that looks like this. Um, their only differences are in line five and six. And that's in specific because the application that I'm starting is just PowerShell, but that doesn't run the script yet. So in the arguments, I also put the location where my script is located that I want to execute. So in here, somewhere all the way till the end, you will find the location of the PowerShell script that is being run by the application that's in the line above. Other than that, of course, it also includes the server and the database where my Power BI uh, uh, model is running at this moment. So this needs to be in there always for every external tool. So this is the file that connects everything together. Having that set and, and knowing that, uh, that we need to drop this in this specific location, and that's the same for every computer. This specific uh, location is where you need the admin permissions to, to drop the files in there. And therefore, uh, is what I mentioned earlier, you can use the business ops tool, uh, which you can download from powerbi.tips.com uh, or powerbi.tips um, to install these tools more easily. You know, just do them all at the same time, or uh, at least don't have to manually edit all these JSON files. Having that said, Let's have a look at the model documenter and how I built this tool and what it's actually doing uh, under the hood. The model documenter is in fact just reading dynamic management views. And dynamic management views are the analysis services management views that uh, run queries to return you information about model objects, server operations, and server health of your analysis services. Knowing that Power BI runs an analysis service under the hood, this should work with Power BI as well. And so it does. There are four different types that we can see inside uh, uh, the dynamic management views categories, which is DB schema, which tells us something about the database model, discover, which will uh, uh, give us more information about operations or running sessions, such as a running refresh. And then we have TM schema, which is tabular model. Um, which you will typically find information about Power BI and analysis services. And last but not least, we have MD schema, which is MDX multidimensional. Looking at Power BI, you will mostly use TM schema operations. And what you can do with these uh, uh, dynamic management views, you can execute them from different applications. For example, from uh, uh, SQL Server Management Studio, if you connect it to your Power BI model, but personally, I'm more a fan of uh, uh, DAX Studio in order to run this. What you can extract, for example, is a list of all your tables in your model, all your columns, measures, perspectives, or partitions, or whatever you feel like. Knowing that, let me show you a few of them. I already briefly showed you my crap file, and this is the most ugly Power BI file that I've ever built and uh, that is breaking all the best practice rules by simply having bidirectional relationships, uh, um, unclear table names, and all that. If I go to the top ribbon here and I simply click uh, DAX Studio, what this will do is it will open an instance of DAX Studio that is directly connected to my Power BI uh, instance. And that is because this server and database parameter were in the connection file. It opened up on my other screen, so there we go. And you can see this on the right bottom side, uh, right-hand right bottom, for example, you can see here the local host. And the local host is representing the location where your analysis service is currently running. The second parameter, the database, you won't find uh, that in here uh, right now. But if you go on the left bottom to the uh, third tab, which is DMVs, stands for dynamic management views. And we run the very top one, dbschema.catalog. And let me zoom this in a little bit. 
This catalog name, that is the database name, where uh, that is, with, which represents your database that is currently running on your local host. So this is actually the first dynamic management view that we already executed. But let's have a look at, for example, tables. So if we look at tables here, and I just search for table operations, I, I find a few. Let me show you the, the difference in, for example, DB schema. And if I execute this one, what this will return me is a list of all the tables that I have in my uh, in my Power BI data model, or so Analyzer's data model, as well as the list is pretty long. If I scroll all the way down, all the metadata tables that are in my uh, uh, analysis services. If I'm in particular looking for only the models uh, or only the tables that are part of my Power BI model, I could better go for the TM schema uh, table operation. And if I run this one, I will get only a list of all the, the tables that are part of my Power BI model. So for example, here you will find the name of the table, an ID, and a model ID. As you probably know, in other services, you can have multiple uh, uh, models running on the same server. Well, in fact, in Power BI, you won't see that. You can only have one model in your Power BI uh, model, uh, data model. Um, so you, this will always be one. Your tables will have an ID, and that can come in useful at a later stage when you want to join different views together. Something else that you see here is, for example, all these local date table stuff that's auto generated by Power BI. They're all hidden. In Power BI, you will never see them. But with dynamic management views or by just opening DAX Studio or Tableau Editor as well, you will be able to discover them here. You can see that they're all hidden. Um, and you can even decide to disable them for good reasons. Um, but as my session is not about that in specific, I will not uh, uh, go in further details for that. Um, now we know that we can find the tables. The next thing that can be interesting is columns, for example. Again, when we search for the TM schema column operation and we execute this one, we get something similar. And as we have here the table ID, we can link them together uh, in order to um, see which column belongs to which table. Um, other stuff that you will find in here is, for example, the date category, if that is listed uh, or filled, uh, as well as, again, a flag if it's hidden or not, as well as descriptions. Descriptions are not filled by default. You can fill them in your Power BI uh, model. Let me show you that in a second. If you go back to Power BI, and I click just a random table here, click a column, and on the right hand side, once I selected a column, I have a description field. If I fill this description field, this will be represented in my uh, tabular object model structure as well. For tables and columns, this might not be super useful, though please do this with every measure you will create from today onwards, as well as calculated columns, of course. Simply because here you can write down a functional description what this measure is representing. If we know that, let's also have a look at, for example, um, uh, the measures, because so far tables, columns, that is something that we get from our source system. So if we have a decent source system, it is probably already described there what this is representing. But let's have a look at measures, because that doesn't exist in any other uh, um, downstream source. So here we go for TM schema measures. And once we execute that, again, we get an uh, overview with the names of the R measure, uh, the table ID that it is uh, where this measure is part of, and we get the expression. This is the full DAX expression as it is uh, uh, created with whatever tool you use for it or just in Power BI. You will also find a format string in here. Again, a flag if it's hidden, uh, uh, modified and created time as well as here we find, for example, an error message. Unfortunately, it's a Dutch message, but it just says the syntax for this measure is incorrect. Um, so if your measure is failing, you can also find some useful error messages in here um, that show you what's wrong with this measure. Last but not least, if you're using display folders, you will also find a display folder in here. 
So for a new object in Power BI that gives you more information about it, there's something else that can be interesting to look at. Row level security, for example. Row level security is something um, that is also not existing in your downstream source and is created inside Power BI. So if we go search for roles, and then we have two operations. That's those discover Power BI roles. Sounds reasonable, right? So let's just give it a try. Once we run this, we will directly uh, return an error message stating um, this core for Power BI roles are only supported for Power BI Premium and Service. Again, I just literally translated what it says here because it's in Dutch. Um, but this doesn't work. It only works if you connect directly to the XML, XMLA endpoint of an already published Power BI model. On the other end, we had a second option, which was TM schema roles. And once we go for that one and we execute that, we actually got to see the uh, role names here as well as a role description. Well, this is interesting because a role description, description doesn't exist in Power BI at all. It simply doesn't exist. You can, there's no place in Power BI where you can fill a description for a role. And this brings a, a huge advantage of another external tool. For example, uh, Tableau Editor. So if I run Tableau Editor from the top ribbon here in my Power BI instance, uh, it will do the same thing. It will directly connect to my already open model. And uh, let me put it on the screen here. And what you will see is that we have the roles here. And here also the same roles are represented. But funny enough, we can just read and edit the metadata of our uh, um, data model in here. So we can just fill the description here um, of a role, which is a functional description again, and we can write it back to Power BI. Let's do that for this one, for example. So this description for this role is our last role for the product category component. Not that this description makes a lot of sense, but for now it's good enough. And if I just hit this little save button in here, I'm actually saving it back to the tabular object model and by doing that, I will be able to read it in the dynamic management views. So let me go back to Deck Studio here and again execute this one. And as you can see here, the second one is now filled as well. Again, there's no place in Power BI where you will find this. You can no nowhere edit these descriptions for roles. Still, I think it's super useful. Now we can add uh, role descriptions, but we don't have insights in the role expression yet. So what is the, uh, the actual expression that filters down my data? That's because that's covered in a different uh, uh, dynamic management view, which is actually table permissions. So in here we have the table permission view, and once we run that, and remember that we have a row level security role ID here, for example, 22340. And let me execute this one. And here we have the same role ID, and here we can actually see the row level security filter expression. So again, if we link those two together, we get more insights in the role expression as well as the name, as well as the description that we filled by using Turbo Editor. So far, some insights of the dynamic management views that I used in order to create my own tool, because that is in particular pretty simple what my tool was doing, running dynamic management views and presenting them in a visual way on the screen. So I just automated these tasks, although PowerShell is not automating these tasks for me. PowerShell is just doing one simple thing for me. It is retrieving the data, the server and database information from Power BI, and in fact, it's just dumping it on your C drive. It is dumping a temporary file on your C drive of your computer, uh, and then it downloads the uh, Power BI template file that generates the documentation from, the, from my GitHub repository. After downloading, it will automatically open it. That's all that it does. PowerShell is not doing anything more or less than this. 
you could debate if this is what you should do uh, with running an external tool. But let me share a few of, you, of the learnings with you um, before I'm going to show you the demo of the tool itself. Capturing server and database parameters is something that I just learned from looking at other external tools. These parameters could be filled, and I just looked at their mobile uh, PBI tool mobile file, looked at it, and thought, okay, I can do this. Uh, I just copy paste it. One thing that took me a long time before I figured out how this, uh, before I got it to work, is actually the double backslash that is part of this specific path and arguments uh, section. For some reason, with a, a, a single backslash, it doesn't work, uh, as Windows doesn't accept a single backslash, but in, in this specific uh, file, it needed to have a double backslash. Don't ask me why. I only got it to work like this, and I also learned this from looking at other tools. Well, other than that, I learned some more PowerShell in general. Uh, and especially when it comes to debugging, uh, trial and error, and handling errors. Um, finally, the final thing that I did with dumping that J a JSON file as a workaround on your C drive, that is actually a workaround as I cannot on demand edit a PBI file. In fact, what I wanted to do is uh, ingest the server and database parameters directly into a new Power BI file. The only way how to do it is super unsupported by unzipping your Power BI file, paste them in there, and make it a PBIX file again. But tried it, it broke again, uh, stopped doing that. So what I'm now doing is just generating a temporary file that will be dumped on your computer. So as soon as I hit the tool button on the top ribbon of Power BI, it will dump a file and that will be overridden every time we run the tool. So don't worry, if you run my tool, I will not uh, um, occupy your entire C drive. I will only take one kilobyte from it and override the file every time again. As I built this tool back in August, uh, I already did some updates to it. In the latest version that I released, I worked mainly on error handling, especially as a lot of people bumped into errors uh, with PowerShell execution policies. They were not allowed to run the, 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 uh, the script or other uh, issues that they bumped into. Other than that, if the temporary folder on your C drive doesn't exist yet, I made it possible to automatically generate it. Um, also, I include a little startup menu. So once you run the tool, you can choose between two different export types. For some reason, a lot of people uh, requested to have an export type to Excel. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of that. But at the other end, I do get why they want, to, want this. Because, of course, if you want to add some more functional descriptions or explanation to your data model, it's easier to just type in Excel uh, as the first version that I built was generating documentation in Power BI. You cannot type in there. Power BI is not a data entry tool. So to some extent, I get why they want this. I decided to build it, but I think I won't use it uh, myself that much, as I prefer to just write uh, and fill in the descriptions in the metadata format. Having that said, I think it's time for another demo. And in this demo, I will just show you how this external tool works in practice. So going back to Power BI Desktop, in the top ribbon, I, you will see an icon that's representing my own tool, the model documenter. If I click this button, it will spin up directly PowerShell. And let me drop it in the correct screen. It will show you first a nice welcome message, welcome to the model documenter. Uh, and then it prints to the screen your local host and the database name. You don't need it at all, but I just printed it to the screen so you can see that it is co connecting correctly. At this moment, uh, the file with the connection details is already dumped on your C drive while, while you didn't even knew. So in here, in this uh, on-demand created folder, you will find a file that is showing you the connection details. And if I uh, uh, open this in a text editor, uh, it is a JSON file. Uh, unfortunately, everything is just on one line, but in fact, it's a JSON file. Um, that includes the local host here as well as the database name. So this will be overridden every time you run the tool. Remember that we have this file here. Um, 
so now I can just choose what will my what will be my export type. Will I export it to Power BI or to Excel? Choose one for Power BI and two for Excel. So first go for Power BI. You quickly saw something flickering through the screen, which is showing you now it will open Power BI, just informing what's going to happen next. As you can see, it is already spinning up a new Power BI instance, and in a second it will ask me to fill in a few parameters. These parameters are preset. So again, it opens on a different screen. And these parameters are preset. So if you didn't change anything during the installation, and it will dump on the predefined uh, um, uh, location, as I just showed you, you can just click load. If you decided that you want to dump these temporary files elsewhere, so the manual location, then please fill this parameter. As soon as you filled it, it will start ignoring the top one. I will just use the default, so I will just click load. And in a second, it will show me a window that is asking for authentication, this one. Remember that we learned today that another service is running in memory on my computer. So it is on my computer right now. So the only thing that I have to do is just connect with my Windows credentials and just hit connect. That's all I need to do. Now it is just importing all the data. So you'll see that all the data is loaded and actually Power BI is now reading the metadata from the other file. And there we go. Model documenter uh, is finished loading. And what you will see now, at first I just created one page that shows you some more information about this tool in specific. Uh, and then I have a few tabs on the bottom. Table and column structure, measures, relationships, and row level security. The other two, the two are tooltips. Let's first look at the table and column expressions. In here, you will find all the tables that are in your model. Both the imported tables, DEX uh, calculated tables, as well as the auto-generated auto-date timetables. On the top ribbon, you will find a few metrics. For example, I flag 12 columns or 12 tables to be deleted. The tooltip that shows you why you should consider to uh, disable your auto-date time feature um, with a little explanation how to do this and where to do this. Um, so all these auto-date timetables will be automatically flagged as uh, to be deleted. Um, other than that, you can also see the difference here in Power Query or DEX generated tables. And if I click one of these tables, on the right hand side, we will see, once it's done loading, uh, you will see the uh, Power Query expression that is running on the back uh, or generated on the back. This is the Power Query expression that is used to generate this table. So you can see the Power Query expression for each of these tables as well. Then let's have a look at measure expressions. Measures are something new that doesn't exist in your uh, downstream data source. So this is something specific for Power BI. Um, if we look at this, we first have uh, a few filters on top. For example, the table uh, name, display folder, and measure name. And these three represent the location where the measure is. So table and uh, display folder represent where the measure is, and you can directly search for that one specific measure. On top, again, a few cards that will show you if the measures are hidden or not, if they are lacking a description, and if they need attention. In case they need attention, this is a simple sign of a broken measure. Down here, you will find all the tables, including display folders and measures with their measure expression, and I will have a few, uh, included a few flags here that if it includes a, a dis uh, description, it will show a green check mark. If it's lacking a description, uh, a yellow warning. And if it needs attention, it will have a red cross as well. And this red cross is simply representing that the measure is broken. Well, this one is broken on purpose because I just typed in some text and not an expression at all. Um, knowing that, let's have a look at a relationship overview. Relationship overview is also where I'm checking a few things. First of all, on the right hand side, I connect all the dots together with all the tables that you have in your model. Looks fancy, but also a little bit messy, right? So what I can do is if I simply click one table, I can see that one table and all other tables that relate to it. In this specific scenario, there's only one table that is related to this selected table. 
Other than that, you see that a few of them are uh, in gray text, and that is in specific because this is an uh, uh, inactive relationship. In case you use a many-to-many -many relationship or a bidirectional one, uh, I also make it red, simply because this is not best practice and you might want to double check if this is actually what you intended to do. Finally, on the left hand side here, you will see a little lock icon and that's only there if you uh, enabled row level security and this uh, specific relationship is marked as security relationship. So you can directly see your, mar uh, your security relationship as well. Finally, I had another to uh, tab for uh, um, row level security. And this shows you the combination of other dynamic management views that I just showed you. The name, the filter expression, as well as the description of this uh, um, role of security role with similar uh, things as we've seen with the um, uh, measure expressions. So we check if it is a valid one, so if it's sta in this state here, um, and I check if there is an error, and if there's one, it will re be represented in here. That actually summarizes this external tool. And exactly the same information is represented in the um, Excel version right now. Having that said, let's have a look at the last few slides. There are a few limitations or for me personally irritations that come with this external tool. First of all is the PowerShell execution policies. PowerShell requires some specific policies to be set for the current user in order to run this tool. On my local machine, as you can see on the right hand side screenshot, it is set to unrestricted for the entire machine, um, or you can set it to the, for the current user to unrestricted. For some people that have a managed device by their company, um, this is all uh, set to undefined by default, and so you might need to change the execution policies. Another irritation is the Power BI privacy levels that might block loading of the data. Um, so please, please set the privacy levels to ignore before you start running the external tools. Then there's another thing, the native database queries. As I'm running all these dynamic management views, which is just a SQL query, uh, it might prompt you to hit the run button for every query that I'm running on the back end while generating this tool. So then you will be prompted about 12 times to hit the run button that you're 100% sure to run this tool. Installation at this moment requires admin approval um, and it requires the MS OLAP 8 provider to be installed in order to generate this. Otherwise, I cannot read these dynamic management views. Last but not least, the Excel template at this moment requires manual downloading and will not be automatically downloaded in case it is not found on the computer. Finally, there are some planned enhancements that I'm looking for uh, with this tool. Ending roles and uh, expressions is what I did last week, actually, so I can get it off this list. Uh, another thing that I want to add is perspectives. Perspectives is not that well used and not that often used yet in Power BI, but there are ways to use perspectives. I really would like to include perspectives as well in Power BI in the model documenter, uh, and I want to make it a little bit more generic. Um, so it can also be used for analysis services, for example. Finally, I want to also include the auto download for Excel templates. And on a later stage, I also want to look at support for live connections. So if you connect to an already published Power BI model, for example, that is not necessarily in Power BI Premium, I want to be able to read the metadata from that one as well. But it might be a little bit challenging. As over XML endpoints, I, I already managed to do this, but without XML endpoints, it can be pretty challenging. And finally, uh, I want to make the installation of this tool much easier by just having a uh, next next finish installer, for example, an uh, MSI. So from now on, I strongly believe that everyone should be capable of, of at least generating some documentation. Just with the hit of a button, you can at least document something about your model and share some insights on how this model is built with your colleague if you hand over a project or if you deliver your solution to your client or your end user, that you can at least share some insights with what is the data model behind this, what are the measure expressions that I used, uh, as well as the descriptions for the measures. So I strongly believe this should be much easier now, uh, and you can do this with every model that you have. 
Having that said, let's do a very brief wrap up. I believe external tools are very strong and opens up tons of opportunities to contribute to Power BI, not only for me or other developers uh, of tools, but also for you. I gave you a few tips on how I build my tool and how easy you can, can learn to do this yourself. External tools are depending on the analysis service metadata format, but as of the general availability of that uh, in September 2020, this should be much easier and also readable and understandable what your metadata is and what describes your model. This uh, external tools allow, allow you to connect and develop uh, with your metadata format and connect with third party tools. So you can use other tools than only uh, Power BI Desktop to develop your Power BI data models. Finally, if you look at the data at the model documenter, it allows me to be lazy or call it efficient by generating documentation instead of conducting a document. It opens up tons of new opportunities to easier hand over your solutions to your colleagues or delivering it to your clients. And I believe it is super powerful, powerful for self-service purposes. So if you open up your data model for self-service uh, report creation for your end users, you can give them some more insights in how this data model is built and how things are linked together, especially your data model, for example. With that, thanks for your attention. Uh, on the screen, you will find a uh, link to my website that includes all the resources and everything that I told you, um, and to keep you, get you started with building your own external tool.